What's up today, Brother Jay? What's up today, Brother John, Sister Joanne, Sister Brenda, and all y'all listening that don't want your name called? Jesus knows your name, and he knows where you're at. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, and we are behind the Texarkana Public Library. We're with the brethren. The brethren are them that do the will of the Father. A question was left behind for us, an anonymous question. It reads on this wise. What are y'all really doing for us street people? Well, I had to tell them what we had done for the street people, but I want to tell you what's more important is what Jesus did for the street people, Ooh, not yeah. what street. Leslie Street, Janetta Wilson did for the street people, no. not what Sister with a Testimony or Soldiers with a Testimony has done for the street people, because we can do absolutely nothing for you. All we can do is pray for you because we don't have the... The 501c3 public uh, nonprofit grants. We have the Father to supply what we're su supposed to give. And he said, go give them water. He didn't say, pay their bills. He didn't say, build them houses. He didn't say, do anything other than take them water in the gospel. And we're in obedience. But this is what Jesus said to the multitudes. Not the ones that are present today. Because they're supporting the Lord. Father God, you see your children. On a cloudy day, it might rain, and Lord, they're not afraid to get a little bit wet for Jesus. No. Lord, they didn't come just for a honey bun and a cup of coffee. Father God, they came because this is the place to be, because this is the truth. And Father God, you said in your word, in John chapter 6, verse 26 and 27, when Yahushua, your son, Jesus, Christ of Nazareth rebuked the motive of the mixed multitude. He rebuked the motive of the heart of the men and women that were following him. And Jesus answered them and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, You seek me not because you saw the miracles, because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. He told them, You didn't come for me. You didn't come for the miracles. You didn't come for salvation. You didn't come to see me, says the Lord God Almighty. You came because you wanted something to eat for your physical body. I'm reading it out of John chapter 6, verse 26. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, because you see, Jesus also was asked the question, what are y'all really doing for us, Jesus? What are you and your disciples really doing for us? The multitude, the mixed multitude, the homeless, the doctors, the lawyers, the Indian chiefs, and yes, I said the Indian chiefs because I still live in America. I still live in the United States of America, and folks, that are of different ethnic backgrounds are considered a different name, but we're all part of the human race. Yes. And that's what I got is grace to come into your face and tell you it is not about race. Yes. Jesus rebuked the multitude, yes. the mixed multitude. That means there were Jews and there were Gentiles. There were Sadducees and there were Pharisees. And there were monkey sees what he wants to seize. Let me tell you what, saints. It's time that the rubber hit the road. It's time to get up off the couch in the church pew and stop telling everybody you're so blessed and you're stressed out mess. Because you're lying because Jesus don't bless messes and he doesn't stress us. No. He said, you didn't come to see me. You didn't come to see the miracles. You came because you wanted something to eat and believe me, he said, you were filled. Verse 27 reads on this wise, labor not for the meat that perishes, but for the meat which endures unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. You want to know what I'm doing for you street people? I'm telling you the truth. 
You want to know what I'm doing for you street people? I'm a street people. My last name is Street. Ha! The laugh is on you, devil. I know what it's like to live with nothing. I know what it's like to live in an 8 by 10 cube. I know what it's like to be away from family and friends and have nothing or nobody. It's just you and your husband, and sometimes it's just you alone. I don't need somebody to preach me the gospel. I got the gospel living in me, and I came here to tell you. Jesus rebuked the mixed multitude. Jesus is God in the flesh. And he rebuked all of us because he said, you didn't come to me, not because of the miracles, not because of the signs, wonders, and miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and you were filled. You were hungry and you wanted something for your physical body. But I came here to tell everybody, why are you here? What are you really doing? This is what I'm doing. I'm telling you, don't labor. For the meat that perishes, labor for the meat which endures unto everlasting life. You have everlasting life, yes. which the Son of Man has given unto you. Yes. Because God the Father sealed him, and he said, Father, the glory which you have given me, I have given them, that they may be one as you and I are. Now, Father... As our officer walks around and he looks for what he's looking for, Father God, I ask you to send angels to protect him, yes, send Lord. angels to hide him. And Father God, I ask you to send them to him to take him where he needs to be and to do yes. what he needs to do, right. Father God. And I right. declare and decree there'll be safety here today. Yes. There'll be harmony here today. There will be no chaos. There will be no confusion in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I declare and decree holy safety and protection is yes. of the Lord. Yes. But Father God, the people went on and they asked Jesus after he had rebuked them. They asked the secret power to do the works of God. Let me tell you what the secret power is, saints. They said unto him, what shall we do that we might do the works of God? And Jesus answered them very simply and he said unto them, this is the work of God that you believe on him who he hath sent. Yes. Saints, I came today to tell you that the blood of the Lamb covers you. The blood of the Lamb hides you, protects you, reconciles yes. you, and restores you. Yes. I came to tell you that if you are a believer, you have a right to all of the promises of God. Yes. You have a right if yes. you endure. But let me tell you what the conditions are because you'll hear different preachers around here across the street, under the bridge, under the rock, over the hill, and to the grandmother's house we went. You will hear them tell you you merely need to believe. And that is a lie. It is doctrinal error. And it is not merely all you have to do is just believe because you have to break down the word believe to understand what you're getting yourself into. Because when you believe that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, then you will understand that you will not seek him because you see miracles. You will not seek him because you had a belly full. You will not seek him because you are convinced by a visible, visible miracle. You will not seek Jesus because you're getting a new house and a new car and a new lover. You will not seek him because you're getting your flesh stroked and your ego stroked. Jesus said, that which should lead godly men to acknowledge me as Messiah are the signs, wonders, and miracles. But no, your appetite, which feeds the sensual man, has taken over. Like you are beasts, impulsive, and wanting, and needing what you have to have. And it's up to you, only to you, to get what you need. But that's not the Bible. That's not the scripture. That's not what Jesus said. He said, call unto me. I will meet your needs. My seed will never beg bread. Saints, let me break this down real simple. Hey, Sister, Sister Bridget, Sister Chelsea, we love you. God bless you. We're praying for you. Father God, you said in your word there are 23 conditions of eternal life. Now, if you go over to any of these other places, they're going to tell you just to believe, sisters and brothers, but I'm telling you, I'm breaking it down in the scripture. 
There are 23 conditions to eternal life. First and foremost, you got to accept Him as Lord and Savior, and then you have to endure. You have to endure unto the end. You can't just believe one time and you're good. Saints, it's time to learn the lesson. We're going to suffer. We're going to go through some things. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them out of all of them. 23 conditions if you're taking notes. The first thing you have to do is come to Christ. John 6, 37, 44, 45, and 65. you got to come to Christ. The second thing that you've got to do is eat his flesh and drink his blood. Oh, that's a hard saying. Understand we're talking about supernatural spiritual things. We're not talking about cannibalism and we're not talking about blood sucking. He said, you will eat my flesh and drink my blood. John chapter 6, verse 50, verse 51, verse 53, and verse 58. He said, you will labor. John chapter 6, verse 27, you will labor. The fourth condition for eternal life reap John 4 35 through 38 John 15 4 through 8 he said you will hate the life in this world let me break that down to you saints he said you will love less your life your family your job your dog your cat your horse your hobby your husband your wife you will love them less and you will love me more. John chapter 12, verse 25. Know this, saints. There are 23 conditions to eternal life. Number six, know God, the Father, no Son, the Son, the Son, know the Son, Christ. John 17, 2 and 3. Seven, you will enter at the right gate. Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Number eight, you will cause no offense. Matthew 18, 8 through 9. And let me break that down. You will not go about offending people on purpose. But if you're preaching the word and you're telling the truth, it's going to offend them. But you ain't setting out with a heart motive to offend. You want them to be saved. He said, you will keep my commandments in Matthew 19, 17. He said, you will forsake all others. In Matthew 19, 27 through 29, Mark 10, 28 through 30, Luke 18, 28 through 30. I could stand here for hours and break all this down. Saints, if you want eternal life, somebody <laughs> lied to you. If they said all you got to do is believe in Jesus going to do the rest, you, gotta, you just got a merry little old ride. How come you still on that roller coaster? How come you still on that merry-go-round? Because this is the word of God. He said you have to live free from sin. Romans 5, 21, 6, 16 through 23, 8, 1 through 13, Titus 2, 11 through 14. Why am I going so fast? You can go back, rewind, pause, rewind, pause, rewind, pause. See, that's what our life is all about this day and age. Rewind, pause. I want to stay in the pause part. I want to stay where I rewound it to 40 years ago. Come on, am I talking to anybody this morning? Your past does not determine your destination. Unless, of course, you stay in that past. And you keep hitting the boink, rewind button. Stop rewinding and pausing, saints. It's okay to do it on the video to get the scripture. But stop rewinding and pausing your life. Look up for your redemption draft not. I'm going to preach. Live free from sin. Continue in well-doing and seek eternal life. Continue in well-doing. What are you doing for the street people? They asked Jesus, what are you doing for us? He said, well, you didn't come because you wanted salvation. You came because you wanted a freebie. I don't mind giving nobody a hand up, but I ain't giving nobody a hand out. Is anybody with me this morning? A hand up. That's what it's about. Continue in well-doing and seek eternal life. Romans 2, 7. Sow to the Spirit. I didn't say sow a seed into swat church. And you'll get saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and healed all at the same time. You get your dog back. You get your bank account back. You get your husband, your wife, your kids and everything else back. I didn't tell you to sow a seed to swat church. It says sow to the Spirit. So if they tell you to send your seed in, and sow your seed into their ministry, they're lying. 
Do some research, saints. We've been indoctrinated. Yes. And we've been brainwashed. If you want to sow to the Spirit, then He'll say, I want you to give to SWAT Church. I want, to, I want yes. you to give yes. to XYZ Ministry yes. because you're sowing to the Spirit. He'll tell you where to sow your seed. Yes. I have need of more seed. That's why I read His Word daily. Because the seed is free, but the needs are great. I sow to the Spirit according to Galatians 6, 7, and 8. I fight. Number 14, I fight. Every day, saints, I fight the good fight of faith. And I lay hold on it. Ha! You want to come up here and circumcise Philistine and question Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Have at it because you're going to hear the word of God and it's going to be the truth. And he said, it is written, if you continue in my words, you will be my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Yes. Fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on it. 1 Timothy 6, 12 and 19. I know somebody might not want to hear this, but be sober. And hope to the end for it. You want eternal life? Be sober. That don't mean you can't ever take a drink of liquor. You might like it. I don't know. I'm not telling you to go out and drink liquor and get drunk. I said, you ain't going to die and go to hell because you drank a bottle of liquor. You're going to die and go to hell because you said, no, I ain't doing it your way. I'm going to do it my way. Be sober. Be vigilant. Be of a right mind. And hope to the end for your salvation. Titus 1, 2, Titus 3, 7, 1 Peter 1, 5, 9, and 13, along with Romans 8, 24. That's a lot of Bible study, saints. Yes. If I'm too lazy to read the Word when I have a need, how am I going to have any seed? I'll have no seed to feed the need. I don't know about y'all, but that rhymes. I didn't memorize this. It's coming from the Holy Ghost. Endure temptations. You know the temptations are going to come, saints. Yeah. That's why it says, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. Because guess what? We're simple when it comes to falling into traps. Yeah. And if you don't have the seed, you're going to fall in a trap. And the devil's yeah. going to say, hi, there you are again. I tempted you and you fell for it. Yeah. God does not tempt man. No. He'll test you. Only the devil will tempt you. That's how you know the difference. Are you being tempted or are you being tested, brothers and sisters? Yes. 17. 23 conditions of eternal life. Let the promise of it remain in you and continue in God and Christ. That means once you've had the promise, you're going to continue. Yes. You're going to continue and you're going to keep telling the Lord, I know you got this. My favorite scripture, one of them this morning, I said it three or four times. I don't know what I'm going to say till I get here. He'll change it up because he's in charge. Yes. For the which cause I also suffer these things, saints. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I'm persuaded. I didn't get persuaded the first day. I've been persuaded over many years yes. of studying the Word of God. Yes. I came here yes. to tell you. Believe, receive, do not be deceived. Let the promise of it remain in you and in God and Christ. 1 John 2, 24 and 25. 1 John 5, 11 through 20. John chapter 15, verses 4 and 6. Now I know you're not going to like this, saints, but this is where the rubber really going to meet the road. Love everybody. Well, you don't know what they did to me, Pastor Street. You don't know, you know, uh, they've done all kind of manner of horrible things to me. I just can't forgive them. Well, you better or you ain't going to heaven. Because it ain't about them getting what they deserve. It's about you not getting what you deserve. Exactly. Forgive them. Because if you don't forgive them, you won't be forgiven. According to the Word of God, it is written, if you do not forgive men... Your Father in Heaven will not forgive you. I didn't tell you to forget it. I didn't tell you to ask God to help them and have mercy on them so that they would repent. I said, you forgive. Let it go. And it ain't a Disney song, saints. It's a very, very simple thing to forgive if you want to. And it's a very, very simple thing not to forgive if you desire to. 
fill the need. Do not be deceived. Receive eternal life. Love everybody. 1 John chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. How do I know the brethren? Because L-O-V-E, they love you. You want to know what Jesus said to the multitudes that said, What are you doing for us street people? I think that's cool because I must look like Jesus or they wouldn't ask me the same thing. What are you really doing for the street people? I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. And I love you according to 1 John 3, 14 and 15. And I'm not scared to admit, does it hurt your feelings when people don't acknowledge the fact that you're laying your life down for them? Well, sure it does. How do you think it hurt Jesus? But you know what? I get over it real quick, saints. Because he said, love everybody. So whoever wrote that up there, thank you. Whoever wrote, what are y'all really doing for us street people? I thank you. God bless you. I love you. Because guess what? You preached my sermon for me this morning. You exactly and completely told me what everybody needed to hear from Jesus. He said, verily, verily, Jesus, in John chapter 6, verse 26. Verily, verily, I say unto you, you don't seek me because you saw the miracles. You don't seek me because you saw the miracles and you're coming to me. You came to get the bread and you were filled. He's wanting you this morning to eat of the bread of life, not the bread that fills your belly. That's a good thing. If a man or a woman's hungry, they can't hear the bread of life coming. But let me tell you what. Saints, you can take communion and it'll sustain you for a few days. Love everybody. I know that's a hard one. He even went as far as to say, love your enemies and pray for them. I do. I have. I am. I will. And I will continue. Amen. Because he said, I've set you. I've prepared you a table in the presence of your enemies. I don't count y'all as enemies. He said, count them as believers and children of the Most High God. But I know when an enemy walks up in my camp, yes. saints. Yes. I know when the enemy comes. Amen. I know because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I came to bring life and life more abundantly. I didn't come to judge him. I came to give him life. Yes. He's going to come back and judge. Yes, he is. Right now, we're not the judge and the jury. No, we're not. I'd like to whack some people upside the head with my Bible sometimes, but that's not my place. I think he can hit us upside the head with his word all by himself. He doesn't need my help. I know y'all love me because if you didn't, you wouldn't be sitting here listening to me. You'd be like, I ain't going down there. You know why? I ain't going down there because I'm going to hear some truth and it's going to get all over me and I'm going to probably get offended. But you know what? I know y'all love me because you ain't going to heaven if you don't. Ha! You don't have to like me. You don't have to like Miss Janetta. No. You ain't even got look around. You ain't even got to like each other. No. But you better love each other. Yes. Am I right, saints? Yes. Anybody here got breath? Anybody got an amen? How I got at least two or three. Hallelujah. So what is the 19th thing that you got to do to receive eternal life? How about keep yourself in the love of God? Wow. Keep yourself in the love of God looking for eternal life. How do you keep yourself in the love of God. I think it's real simple. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. You can hang these two on the what? The law and the prophets can be hung on those two. Guess what? If you love yourself and you love God more than you love yourself, you're going to love your fellow man. You're not going to commit adultery against them. You're not going to fornicate with them. You're not going to lie to them. You're not going to steal from them. You're not going to cheat them. You're not going to beat them over the head. You're not going to beat them up. You're not going to murder them. You're not going to covet. You're not going to do none of them things because you love God and you keep yourself in the love of God by loving other people. Hallelujah. I know that's a hard saying. That's in Jude chapter 20. I'm sorry, Jude. It's only one chapter, 20 through 24. Keep yourself in the love of God. We got four more. How about this one? This is a little bit harder, isn't it? Overcome sin. Let me ask you a question. If God said you can do all 23 of these, you can do all 23 of these, can't you? Can we do all 23 of these? Yes. Yes. Why? Because the Spirit of God lives in us. Because He will keep us to the end. But we've got to love Him and we've got to obey Him and we've got to serve Him. And when you sin, repent. 
1 John 1 9. If you confess your sins, he is just and faithful to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That's not for unsaved folks. That's for us saved folks. Okay? Overcome sin. Revelation 2, 7, 11, 17, 26. Revelation 3, 5, and 12, and 21. And Revelation, it looks like 14 and 15. Oh, look at this one. You mean we got to be faithful unto death? Yeah. You mean I got to do this till the day I die? Yes. You mean I got to have faith and love people and forgive them till the day I die? Yes. Amen. Be faithful Amen. unto death, number 21. That's Revelation 2.10, Hebrews 12, 14, and 15. Wow. I got to do this to the rest of my days, all throughout the rest of my days, saints. How hard is that? It's very difficult if you disobey. It's very simple if you obey. And it takes practice. You got to practice anything to make it perfect, which means mature. So practice your faith. Get up every morning and say, thank you, Lord. I'm still alive. I'm still breathing. I might not have everything I want, but I'm still alive. Thank you, Lord, for another day to get it right. Don't beat yourself up and don't live in the past. Remember, we're not hitting rewind. We're not pushing pause because we need to get out of the rewind mentality. We need to get out of the pause mentality. We need to keep perpetually moving forward. Number 22, saints, is very simple. Believe and obey the gospel. It goes right back to the beginning. Come to Christ. Come to Christ, number one. Number 22, believe and obey. Now, what do you think that means? I came to Christ. I believe, but I ain't obeying. Eh. There's the problem. You want to know what's wrong? Disobedience. When I disobey the Father, He chastises me. He doesn't kick me out. He chastises me. He whoops me. He corrects me. He disciplines me. And He teaches me what to do to to obey but he'll never ever stop loving me no. believe and obey John 3 15 through 19 also verse 36 John chapter 4 verse 14 John chapter 5 verse 24 John chapter 6 verse 40 47 and 54 Second Corinthians 5 17 and Romans 1 5 see there's a lot of scriptures on believe and obey you can't just believe. You got to obey and you got to have faith. It is impossible to please God without faith. I love this last one, number 23. After all of that, saints, this is so simple and this is the end of it. Be born again, hear Christ, and follow Him. Yes. Don't follow SWAT church. Don't follow under the bridge, over the bridge, in the rock, under the rock, over the rock. The Church of Christ, the Catholics, the Baptists, the Pentecostals, the holiness, I can go on and on and on. Don't follow any of them. Don't follow a man. Don't follow a woman. Be born again. Hear Jesus Christ of Nazareth and follow him. And he will send you in the right direction. He'll send somebody yelling and screaming on a Sunday morning for you to wake up. Come out from among them. Be separate. And he'll love you where you're at. Little faith, no faith, big faith, great faith, lost faith. He'll love you where you're at. Yes. Where's that at? John chapter 3, the whole chapter. Right. John chapter 10, verse 27 through 29. Saints, Jesus rebuked the multitude and he told them, you're only coming to get what you can get to take care of your earthly needs. He said, come to me, all ye that are heavy burdened, laden down with sin. I don't know where you are right now. I don't know what your walk with the Lord is, but I know if you're here, you're here for a reason other than to get something to eat or something to drink. It's because the Lord drew you. The Lord loves you. He's put his hand upon you. He's given you grace. He's given you mercy, and He's given you eternal life. My prayer for you today is simple. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. I feel it falling down on me. Yeah, I feel the rain. I feel the rain. 
I feel it falling down on me. Well, it's the former and the latter rains together. No, I ain't talking about no weather. It's a Holy Ghost rain and it's falling down on me. Yeah, yeah, I feel the rain. Holy Ghost rain. Say something I'm talking about the rain. The rain of the Holy Spirit yeah. in your heart. That he would rule and reign in your heart. And that you would live to see another day. And you would maintain and sustain the grace that God has given you. I love you. What are y'all really doing out here for us street people? We're loving you. The only way that we know how to and the only way that we're capable of right now and that's just coming and being here and saying, please don't give up. Please don't stop. God has a plan and a purpose yes. for you. Yes. And if we have it, we'll give it to you. And if we don't, we'll tell you. We're going to have more later. Hello, sister. I love you. God bless you. I prayed for you. I got to see you this morning. Hallelujah. Have a blessed day. What's that, sis? I know you did. We've been praying for you. My sister's here. Y'all sister's here. Pray for us. We are, we are street people. We're streets. Where's, where's the S? We're streets with a testimony. We're streets with a testimony. We're saints with a testimony. We're saved with a testimony. We're sinners with a testimony. We're sons with a testimony. We're students with a testimony. You get the idea. How about servants with a testimony? God bless you. I love you. Chelsea, Tammy, Sister Bridget, all y'all, thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you. God bless you. Pray for us.